we are resuming the faith tour. We are gonna be on week nine of visiting a church, temple, mosque, place of spiritual worship, so I can learn and understand what my relationship is with God. And I've learned so much already about my relationship, about who God is to me, about spirituality, and I feel that I've really come into a really powerful place. But I'm gonna continue because there's always room to deepen in intimacy with anyone and with God in general. So this week we are going to Red Rocks Church again. That was the very first place I visited when I started this tour and I feel that I'm being called back because it was one of the most activating experiences I've had yet. So we're gonna go there. I'm super excited. That's a little aggressive, I know, right? Some of you are like, somebody with too much testosterone came up with that. Lack of confidence, that's the number one definition. Your neighbor, say my confidence is coming back. Is Tell your back. other neighbor, say my confidence is coming back. My confidence. To find out you're a fraud, you're a hypocrite, who are you kidding? Welcome back to week nine of this faith tour. Technically it's week 11 because I took two weeks off for integration, but we'll just roll with week nine. And this week I went back to Red Rocks Church, which was the first church that I started off going to. And the experience was impeccable. And ideally I've been wanting to go to a new church, temple, mosque, place of spiritual worship but something was pulling me back to Red Rocks. And it was actually pulling me back to Red Rocks the last time I went, which was the last video I posted when I went to Riverside Baptist Church. And I ignored that nudge and I went to Riverside and had a really bad experience. And so I had to listen. So I went back and I had the experience that I deeply needed and desired for all aspects of my life. And it was wild and crazy. This church is really cool because it is a non-denominational church. They do believe in, it is a Christian church, but it is very much, their message is about your God. They speak to you that it's like your God. They're not trying to teach and preach what their experience is with God. And I don't know, it's really relatable to like everyday life. And that's why I really enjoy it. And I get a lot out of it. So I just keep listening and I just will go when I'm called to go there. And the cool thing that I love about this church is that they do these specific themes. So they'll switch up themes and it'll be like a six to eight week kind of segment. And I got there and this week they had just started, it was the first week of a segment called Alive and Free. And I believe that was such a cool message because I've just gotten really clear on what my purpose is here for women and what my what my purpose is here period and what I'm here to do when it comes to my business and leading women into feeling their aliveness and creating freedom in their life and ultimately liberation. So when I saw that title, I was like, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And so they're going to talk about a topic every single week, whether that's about depression, anxiety, insecurity, lack of worthiness, right? The things that we face in every single day life that we can use God to help us move through, to help us uh, heal through. So I thought that was really powerful. And one thing that I never got when I was growing up in the Catholic Church was the relatability aspect to everyday life. I felt like there was a lot of stuff spoken about the Bible and a lot of like old stories and old references used. And that's just kind of what I can recall. Maybe they did it, but I don't remember. And so to be able to go to a church where it's like they're speaking to you and the things that you're going through, through the lens of God, like that makes so much more sense. 
when I was talking to my massage therapist after church, I went to go get a massage and he very much is connected to God himself. And he was talking about why I dislike or felt disconnected from the Catholic church is because that they use a lot of the Old Testament and these types of churches use more of the newer teachings of the New Testament. So yeah, I'm still not into like the Bible or anything like that, but I just feel that these experiences are helping me create a really powerful relationship to God. And my massage therapist asked me why I haven't opened up the Bible yet. And my expression of that was, isn't the Bible man-made? Yes, there's a lot of different stories and books from different prophets. That's the word. Again, I haven't dove into the Bible again since I was in Catholic school, but I know that many of them were connected to Jesus. And I don't know, this is just my open teaching and op or my open sharing. But I felt that how much of the Bible is true because people can fabricate their stories when they're telling stories no matter what. And through the trainings that I've learned about the mind, about memory, a lot of times when we go to tell a story, especially like going to write it after experiencing it, it isn't necessarily always truth. So there's been resistance to that of reading a man-made a man written book or a book written by all these different men and not and I think it's just because I feel I want to build my own relationship with God and people say well if you want to, if you want to build your relationship with God then you got to know God's word and I'm like but I can experience God's word through my day-to-day -day life so that's just kind of something that came through before I got into even anything that happened at the church and then the other question he asked me was why do you not feel connected to Jesus? Because when I went to the church, the very first thing that the pastor opened up with was communion. And he said that if you are not a believer in Jesus yet, then do not take this communion, which I already had personally in my own discernment, my own religious spiritual sovereignty had opted out of when I walked in the door. So for him to say that, I was like, wow, like my intuition is so spot on and my connection to God is so spot on that that was just affirming. So I decided not to take the communion. And when I was talking to my massage therapist, he was asking me like why I don't believe in Jesus or why Jesus is such a uh, triggering subject for me. And my response to him was, why do I need to know Jesus when I already know God and God is connected to through all religions without Jesus. So why do I need to know Jesus if I'm believing in more universal God rather than a religious God, right? I feel that Jesus, there's a lot of like Jesus pushers and Jesus thumping people. Again, this is just my experience. I'm just speaking for my rawest truth that it kind of turns me off and it triggers me and it makes me contract. And so I've just witnessed my crazy relationship with God happen and miracles happen, like wild miracles that I could only say that was God. Why is it that I can experience God and then feel the Holy Spirit move through me? Um, why do I need Jesus? I know it's the Son of God, but in other religions, there's a God-like figure and there's not Jesus, which as I'm exploring, there are these types of experiences or these types of people intertwined in different religions. But while I was at church, he said the most profound thing that then made me kind of open up my mind to maybe exploring the understanding of Jesus is God created Jesus not for religion, but for relationship. And so I feel that a lot of religious constructs really create this, um, they don't give you grace. They really create all these rules. And I'm not here to connect with God to experience more rules because I already experienced rules growing up. And while I was in uh, Catholic school and exploring the Catholic faith, that I'm like, no rules. Like if you know me, my whole movement is about liberation. It's breaking free from the boxes that society has put you into. It's unleashing your untamed woman, right? It's allowing yourself to be free, to move freely with the world in life and connected to God. And I don't believe, again, you've heard in my, my videos prior, sin does just that. It doesn't give you grace. It says you are wrong. And that's how I feel about it. 
Maybe how you're listening and how you feel about it is different, but how I feel about it is that. A lot of things came up, but it was really cool to just hear like, okay, like I can connect to Jesus and not be relating to religion. Um, and my biggest thing is just to explore all of theology. Like I think that so many people find one religion without giving an understanding to other religions and other belief systems and other ways of connecting to source to God. And then they just project their one way onto everyone without taking the time to explore other religions. How can you know so, so sure if you don't know what other religions are talking about, right? I feel that's what a lot of Catholic and even Christians do is like they preach the Bible and they preach this one religion way of being without even having taking the time to explore what other people are talking about. And that's not everyone. I just believe that there are some people out there like that and I've experienced it. Might be just triggering everything that I just said to you. Might be crawling out of your skin based off of everything I just said. And I understand that. Again, this is my journey, my exploration. I'm not saying this is truth. I am just saying this is what I've come to so far. And I'm willing to open, right? I'm willing to open. Just like when he said that, it's about relationship, not about religion. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I can explore the whole Jesus thing one day. And even my massage therapist was like, why haven't you read the Bible? And I was like, I just have felt called to it. I very much am a stubborn gal. I have been. I won't let anyone persuade me of my belief systems. I won't let anyone persuade me of what I should do or how I should be. Like, ask my parents, they'll tell you I'm not easily persuaded. So spiritual sovereignty, spiritual discernment is what I stand for. And it's my journey and I'm exploring it. Alive and Free was the experience that, or the, the series that they started at Red Rocks Church. So I, I told you what Alive and Free is about. They're gonna do a, a new topic every single week. And this week's was about insecurity. And I've been exploring certain aspects of my business as to why it feels so edgy for me to scale to the level and reach and visibility that I know I'm supposed to be standing in and holding. And everyone kept saying like, do not feel worthy of it. And worthy to me didn't feel like it was in resonance because I do feel worthy. I feel highly worthy, but there's parts of me that feel insecure and afraid, right? Like, oh my gosh, can I really do it? I feel worthy of it, but like, can I really do it? Am I really qualified, right? And maybe those are this one and the same, but how worthiness resonates in my body. I'm like, no, I know I'm worthy. I know I know I'm epic. I know I know. And there's also parts of me that feel like, I don't know, can I do it? Can I hold it? Anyway, so insecurity is the thief of joy, is kind of the experience that he was sharing. And he was saying how insecurity will cripple us of the experiences that God is trying to open doors for us to step into. Meaning that we're so hyper fixated on the fear on what, people think about us on not being adequate enough for whatever it is that we're trying to step into. And we can go through the life and go through so many beautiful seasons where God continues to open the door for us and we stand at the, at the door's edge and we either step through with such insecure, insecurity that we forget to celebrate what we've just received. We forget to thank God for what has just been given to us or we don't fully step into the door and we keep ourselves at the edge of the door in full fear and trembling and shaking in our boots because we're afraid to step through that door because insecurity is crippling us. And he gives the example of it being like, you know exactly what God wants for you next. It's very clear. It's very apparent, but you're so insecure and you're so afraid that you miss these opportunities, you don't take that step forward, you don't walk through that door. And so many people are living with the what ifs, I wish I should, I wish I would have, why didn't I, narratives, regret that is moving through their mind and is continuing to disconnect them from the joy and the love that life is supposed to be about. So he continues to go on and share different books, different excerpts from the Bible, which I just did some video here so you could kind of see the experience of how 
the church was and kind of what he was talking about. But I know the message was that God stands beside you when you take the full step forward, land on your feet with full faith that you're going to be guided to what comes next, that God is always with you. And the main message with these Bible excerpts that I'll share here. Say thus, Red Rocks, today. Now then you, I got something for you. Now then you and all these people, get ready. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of, to, to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Joshua, I get that you're scared. I know you feel insecurity. I know everything about you. So you got to know this. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And because that's true, you can be strong and courageous, even though you don't know how this is going to turn out. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. And then he says it again. I want you to be strong and very courageous. Be courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God says, I am with you. I will not forsake you. I will not leave you. And that God's word trumps over any feelings that we experience in our life so continue to remember that God is always with you and that you can hand the insecurity over to God and God will share with you confidence the confidence that you deserve and the pastor shared a really cool story about how he went to a conference I'm pretty sure it was like a conference of a big pastor that was speaking or maybe multiple pastors he didn't really explain the details but he goes to this conference he goes the first day, he's in the subway, he gets super claustrophobic. The subway stops in underneath the tunnel and he's having like almost a panic attack. His wife's praying for him. And so the next day he decides not to go to the conference. His wife goes and he stays in the hotel room and he was begging and asking for God to bring him confidence. And so he's reading the Bible and searching the Bible and trying to find all the answers for why he doesn't have confidence and connecting to God and praying and writing. And then his wife calls him later on and says, you have to come to the night experience. And he's like, I'm not coming to the night experience. You know what? It just happened yesterday. I'm not going in a subway again. And she's like, catch a taxi. So he catches a two hour taxi to the conference where he goes to listen to a pastor speak. And he's already feeling insecure because this is a really powerful pastor. The pastor is well known. And I guess apparently his wife loves watching this pastor. So he doesn't like the pastor. He's never met him before. But because the wife watches the pastor and he'll come home to her, his wife watching the pastor preach on TV. Right? That's his insecurity. And he was explaining other ones that he had as well. So he decides to go. And inside of this this experience, he walks in knowing that he's been begging and asking and praying and hoping for God to bring him confidence. The pastor starts out the whole experience saying, I know that there's someone in here who needs confidence, who has been praying for confidence. And the pastor was like, whoa, like he's speaking to me. I didn't know that this was how my confidence was going to be delivered. That was really just epic to witness like God's work and another reason why I'm like do you need the Bible like he didn't get the message from the Bible he got it from when he was listening to the pastor and I get you're gonna say like well because he listened he read the Bible that's why he got the message okay all in all I thought it was really powerful to just hear that story and the way that he shared it and then there's a part of me that's coming up right now that's saying like yes there's religion, but you also have to do the inner work. So for him to to really fully receive confidence, it's important for him to have a therapist, right? Or for him to do the inner work that allows him and his body to feel confidence, unwavering faith, right? Because I feel like a lot of times people will go to church and they'll want confidence because they're feeling insecure, 
but they're just trying to receive it from God rather than doing the inner work themselves too. Cause there is that peace, right? Like you must, I think God said, like, I think they said God opens the doors and then you must take the action to actually make it happen. I wonder if it's in my notes. So yeah, in my notes, he says, put your foot down in faith. So God will meet you once you put your foot down. You can't just sit here in your house, hoping, wishing, wanting that it's going to come true. And then it happens. It's like, you have to meet God halfway. God will meet you halfway. He doesn't insert himself without free will. So he is waiting for you to take the action so then he can bring you the reward, the things that you need that are required for your next steps, for your next level, for the next expression of you. And I loved the example that he used. He's like, I'm not gonna give you what you're praying for in your bed, telling your friends I'm praying for this thing. You must take the step in full faith. And when you take the step in full faith, that's when I will meet you. Just a really cool words of wisdom to remember like, it's also part of like law of manifestation that you you can manifest and do the visualization and write it down, but you must actually take the action in order, in, in order to receive the manifestation that you desire. So what I'm recognizing and witnessing in all of these experiences is everything is so connected and related and everyone is just coming back to the fact that there's a higher power and that there's love. Right? And that we are love consciousness, which I think is really cool. But these experiences just helped me to have bigger breakthroughs. And so he gave the example of taking the action by sharing this experience that he started this church, I guess it was like 19, 20 years ago. And they had 75 members and then they did a fundraiser. The fundraiser lost money, but because the fundraiser was combined with Colorado Christian University. He gained 75 new members overnight. So they were at a hunt from 75 to 150 overnight. I love that share because it was such a reminder that shit can shift quick, right? That miracles happen all of the time and that we don't need to grow our lives in a linear fashion that magic happens all the time, miracles happen all the time. But when we put our foot down in full faith, God will meet us with those miracles, which just gave me the chills. So that was the gist of it. And then at the end, they asked you to go up if you wanted to pray and worship at the altar. It's if you wanted just to feel more of God, connecting, I think connection to God and the Holy Spirit and I guess Jesus. You go up to the altar and those that are familiar with this, you'll know what it's called. I was sitting in my aisle, sitting in my chair in the aisle, and I kept feeling my like left foot like twitch, which was the way to the aisle. And then it like actually took a couple steps forward and I was like, or to the side to like leave out the aisle to go to the front because I wanted to be prayed over. And I was like, no, I can't do that. I just rejected the communion. I have a hat on, like all of these excuses as to why I shouldn't go to the front to experience the prayer and something was just like this is exactly what the message is about it's about insecurity and if you're feeling afraid to go do something you must go do it so i asked the people next to me if they could move out of the aisle so i could go to the front didn't know why i was trying to go to the front i just knew i had to go to the front so i always listened to that and i went to the front and i stood next to this woman i was standing there and Nothing was happening. I was just like praying, feeling the music at this church. You can literally feel like music thumping in your heart, which feels like God is like, like um, inhabiting your heart is like part of you. Cause it's like, oh, oh. every time the bass like hits, I'm feeling that. And then towards the end, there was a song that's like, you are surrounded, surrounded by God. And I was thinking about the challenges that I'm facing up to this point in my life and one that continues to surface kind of the same reoccurring theme that I haven't figured out the lesson yet so it keeps showing up. I thought that's what I was going to like heal from or move through until I realized that, that challenge was connected to my mom and if you are new here my mo mother is in early stage moderate stage dementia that's progressing and I was just back home with her for two weeks which is why I took a pause um just was with my dad and stepmom and then my mom and all of that what I recognized here at this church experience on Sunday was 
that the challenge I'm going through is connected to my mom. And I saw my mom and I saw what she's going through. And God gave me the word testimony that like there's a testimony in this story and that there's nothing that isn't perfectly cured. It's not a mistake that she's going through this. This has been given to us for a reason for her, maybe to find her purpose, for me to have a deeper why in my business and my impact for my brother, right, to find his way deeper, or I don't know what his is, that's his own journey. That this has all been put into our life perfectly curated because there's a lesson that's supposed to be learned, there's a testimony that's supposed to happen, there's a bigger impact that's supposed to come from this when we can really remember that. And so the feeling I was just feeling, it was just all the love I have to her, all of the power that she still holds within her to heal and I'm like bawling my eyes out to the point where it's like, I'm crying, tears are coming down. And then I was like, <gasps> that, that level of crying. And it just made me really feel the presence of God. And not in the context of religion, not in the context of anything other than my relationship with God. And I can say that 11 weeks ago when I embarked on this journey, I did not have that experience. It was 11 weeks ago since I went to Red Rocks for the first time. And my massage therapist asked me, what did you notice that was different? And I said, I was definitely a lot more receptive. I was definitely a lot more vulnerable. I was definitely a lot more open to the messages. And I definitely felt the presence of God and not just like, oh, you're there, but like, oh, you've been there. And this journey together the past 11 weeks has been so profound. Like, it's just really cool to continue to explore and deepen my relationship with God. And I feel like I'm going to continue to cry. Literally 11 weeks ago, I hadn't cried. Yeah, like maybe like four or five or six months. Like there was not a single tear that would come out of me. I'd pray to God that I would have a cry. The minute I prayed to God that I would have a cry, I cried. But not having a cry for the past four to six months was so numb. Like, and numbness is worse than anything you could ever experience. Because when you're numb, you stop, you stop participating in life. When you're sad, you still have a heart that feels. When you're numb, you're numb. You're checked out of life. It's almost like you have like a like a glass encasing over you that nothing can penetrate you you're just like so numb to life i don't recommend that if you are feeling numb i highly recommend a lot of things <laughs> and this is not a coaching experience so um, if that's something that you are feeling you can just go ahead and email me i'll put my email in the, sh the description below just know that numbness you can bring yourself out of numbness we call this in the ner nervous system dorsovagal collapse or checkout where you check out of life and you must bring yourself through dorsovagal back into sympathetic back into the more resting state the safety state the connected state that's my experience with this church i love it i love the experience i love the journey i'm on i'm so grateful to be able to experience this i feel like there's going to be a book I can write one of these days or something that I'll share with people. I don't know. This experience is super cool. I highly recommend if you haven't found your relationship with God that you embark on a faith tour. So epic. So epic. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for witnessing. Thank you for coming here open. Thank you if you did get triggered for staying to the end. I know that it can, it's not always easy when my beliefs don't align with what maybe you're standing in or maybe I'm speaking to things that you do believe in that I'm saying I don't believe in. But at the end of the day, these are the conversations that we get to have in order to grow and evolve, right? Not everyone has to agree on everything. Not everyone has to see the world in the way that you see it or I see it or they see it. And we can come to like the agree to disagree or even just a healthy conversation and debate to be able to help each other deepen into more truth. So I thank you and I will see you next week.